Nicole, speaking there, we're going on rifling through some of the issues that uh, uh, do better when it looks like a trade deal is in hand or close to one. Uh, I'm sorry, a military deal or peace deal, whatever you want to call it, a security deal uh, with the North Koreans. Uh, but if, if all of a sudden now you're talking about cutting back on joint military exercises with the South Koreans, not surprisingly, defense and related issues go down. So it's uncanny how that goes. Uh, market watchers Keith Fitzgerald and uh, David Duncan on all of this. David, what do you think the markets are telling us post this, you know, initial talk stage? I think it's essentially reiterating the fact that something like North Korea and nuclear conflict is what we call a tail risk. It's this highly unlikely and yet severe type situation, and the markets can't respond to it. They don't drop when they worry about nuclear war. How do you price something like that? And consequently, Neil, they can't rally on the word of things potentially starting to look better. The markets have to price the day-to-day realities of fundamentals, Federal Reserve, things Things of that nature. And so I'm not surprised we're not seeing a rally on this news because it isn't the type of news one way or the other that should provoke markets. Well, that's a very good point. And we should stress prior to these two coming together, the president and Kim Jong-un, the markets had a a nice run, about one and a half percent on all the major averages. So we should put that in some context. Having said that, though, Keith Fitzgerald, I'm wondering what you make of what the markets are fixated on. I think Typically, markets trade on on the fundamentals. I mean, they get these gyrations in the meantime of fear and war and all that. I understand that. But by and large, earnings, good, right there. Uh, Economic activity, stronger, right there. So you could make the argument that the fundamentals right now are sound, and that will provide a base for stocks here. Or, Or has that already been factored in? You know, Neil, I would take it one step further. I think traders price certainty into the markets. And to the extent that certainty is there, then they have a green light to put their foot on the gas. They have a good light, a good view into the things that you just mentioned. The key is when they emotionally get you know bound up, just like individual investors. That's what causes the uncertainty. The tail risk is very real. But in the interim, you can't price for that. Yeah. You know, David, it's interesting. I guess the foregone conclusion tomorrow is the Federal Reserve will announce another quarter point hike. I think that would bring us up to around the 2% level or so on the overnight bank lending rate known as federal funds, which is a big leap from the near zero we had. Um, How much higher do you think they go? They might indicate still more rate hikes to come. I don't know where you stand on that, but spell it out. Well, I think that they will raise again in December in the Fed futures market, which has really been pricing most of the year, a very low probability, has moved much higher. So I think you get another quarter point at the end of the year. And and I think that's a positive, though. I don't think that they are going to surprise markets anytime soon. The bigger issue, Neil, about the tightening or what we're calling normalization, because you can hardly call a negative real rate tightening. It's just... It's moving the process towards monetary normalization. The bigger issue is that reduction of balance sheet, how quickly they're selling off assets and what that does to the overall yield curve. And frankly, we think that they're going at a snail's pace and and that they see positive growth in the market, but not inflationary. And that's a good thing for equity investors. You know, Keith, the one thing I worry about, the the more they raise short term interest rates, let's say the two year note goes up a like amount. The 10 year note's been saying constant. They're getting close to being very even, if not inverted. Um, And I know in the past when that's happened, uh, it's not good. I mean, at the very least, a slowdown, at the worst, a recession. Um, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but what are you looking at? Well, I think it's the speed of the normalization, Neil, that is absolutely critical. The Fed is telegraphing the slowest rate normalization in recorded history. They want to take measured steps. Now, a lot of people think that's because they're planning ahead and they're being very deliberate in their actions. What is rate normalization, by the way? You're talking about getting to historical... Your constant averages that we have. We've exactly. been an anomaly for the past decade, right? Yeah, we've been we've been artificially low for a long time. Right. Now, a lot of people believe this is very deliberate and very methodical on the Fed's part. I happen to think the Fed lost control a long time ago, and they're forced to react to global traders who, by and large, are setting the pace by how they treat government bonds all over the world. So That's if right. it's a fast rate hike, then we got a problem. If it's a slow measured hike and the Fed can maintain the illusion of control, and I know that's harsh, then you know what? Traders are going to be okay with that. Gentlemen, uh, great reads on all of this. I appreciate it. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Neil.